Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to start our chapter on reasoning and proofs. So we're going to start with our first section, which is about patterns and inductive reasoning. All right, so first, first vocab word. Uh, inductive reasoning is a type of reasoning in which we use patterns to make a prediction about something. Uh, that prediction is what we call a conjecture. So that's another vocab term for you. So inductive reasoning uses patterns. We're going to do deductive reasoning in a few lessons from now. So just keep in mind, inductive is patterns, using patterns. All right, so let's look at the first example. Use inductive reasoning to find the next two terms in each sequence. Then make a conjecture about the rule that the patterns follow. So we have two um, two things that we need to do here for our examples. Let's look at A. We have a pattern, a numerical pattern, 45, 40, 35, 30. If we look at this, it looks like we subtract 5 from each term to get the next. So if I continue that pattern, I would end up with 25 and 20 for my next two terms. That was the first part of our example. The second part says to make a conjecture about the rule. So our conjecture, conjecture is to subtract 5 from each term. And it can be just as simple as that. You don't need to make it too long, but you definitely want to explain what's going on in that pattern. All right, uh, example 1b is more of a visual example, not as numerical here. Uh, we have a circle, and if we look at our pattern, the first circle has a line going straight down the middle. The second circle now also has a line going horizontal. Then the next circle has a couple diagonal lines. If we look really closely, hopefully, you see that the pattern is that we keep dividing each part in half. So here, my first one, I had this. If I divide each one of those in half, I end up with that second, that second circle. If I divide each one of those in half, I end up with the third circle. Now if I divide each one of those in half, one, two, three, I should end up with this one. So here, if you want to think numerically, here I have two sections. Here I have four sections. Here, if we count, we have eight sections. Here, if we count carefully, we have 16 sections. And then in the next one, this might be a little difficult to draw, but we're going to do our best. We should have 32 sections. All right, so let's do this. So we divide it. There's four, eight, oh, geez, one, two, three, four. There's 16. And then we divide each one of those in half. Ooh, okay, we'll just put a line in half of each one of these, and it's gonna take a second, and um, I think one more. All right, hopefully that's 32. Sometimes it's a little tricky. You can be really careful when you draw around and make sure that it works out. So conjecture, is split each section in half to get the next term. And you can add that too, to get the next term. All right, so um, moving on from inductive reasoning, we have our next vocab term, which is a counterexample. A counterexample is an example that proves that a statement or a conjecture is false. So we need to find some sort of example that proves that something is not true. And I have a little note here. To prove that a statement is false, you only need one counterexample. Just one will do the trick. All right, let's look at our example. So A, if an animal is a bird, then it can fly. So when we want to think about a counterexample, there's actually a little bit of a formula 
for counterexamples, we want, so if I have, um, we're going to get into a, a couple terms here. If I have if blank, and we're going to call this, and we'll go over it in the next lesson, the hypothesis, then, and a conclusion, so we have two statements here. Our counterexample needs to be, so true for the hypothesis, but false for the conclusion. That's how to find a counterexample. So it has to be true for the first part, false for the second part. So I need this part to be true, and I need to find something that makes this false. So what kind of animal that's a bird can you think of that doesn't fly? Well, there's a couple examples. Um, let's do penguins. Penguins, a penguin, we can do a penguin, is a bird. So it's true for the first part, but it can't fly. Can't fly. So it's false for the second part. So that would be our counterexample. All right, let's look at the next example. Uh, if you multiply a number by 3, then the product is divisible by 6. So what we need to do, remember, we need to multiply a number by 3, but we want it to not have a product that's divisible by 6. So uh, let's do 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15, is not divisible by 6. So there's our counterexample. All right, and last one, any three points will make a triangle. Now this one's a little different. There's no if something, then something. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, well, I could rewrite this if I wanted to. We don't have to, but I still want this first part to be true. I want three points, but I want this part to be false. So I don't want it to make a triangle. So if I take three points and I don't want it to make a triangle, we're going to need those three points. And let me make the points red. We're going to need those three points to be collinear. We need them to create a straight line so that there's no triangle. So if you wanted to write a statement here, you could say three points or three collinear points uh, will not make a triangle. Will not make a triangle. All right, and there's our counterexamples for those examples. All right, and well, that is it for today. Nice short little lesson. Well, thank you for watching and remember, math is fundamental.